Hey guys, Justin here from Patriot Campers. Well, if you've been following any of our posts, you're gonna know my big 200 series is now gone. Had a lot of good times with that truck over the past 12 months, saw a lot of the country with the family in it, but it's time for something new. We wanna showcase what we can do. We've built a few 79s for customers now, but this time we're really gonna go over the top and show all the best gear that this country has to offer. Now keep in mind, we're completely impartial to any brand. So everything that we put into this build, we're using it for a reason, because we think it's the best. This will be the best 79 series dual cab in this country. Make sure you watch all the videos and wait till you see this thing completed. All right, so this is where every Patriot Campus Super Tourist starts. Creative conversions. The best guys in the business are chassis extensions. We've just put 300 mil in the chassis of this brand new 79 series Toyota Land Cruiser, GXL with the factory lockers, V8 turbo diesel. Now I'm gonna head off to TJM. Got a bit of a shopping list there, gonna put all that gear together, get this thing down to the Patriot Campus factory and get this build started. Okay, so first part of the build, the shopping. Big shopping trolley, big gear. I'm at TJM head office, they've given me the full run of the warehouse, I can grab whatever gear I like. This is gonna be some fun. All right, so definitely need two of these. Super Tura needs one in the front, one in the back. Wouldn't go anywhere without these ones. So how good's this? Who has had run of a full 4x4 accessories warehouse before? I know I certainly haven't. I'm probably gonna spend a little bit more time here than I thought. I might dig through a few of these boxes. I know Sarah's Prado needs a few extra things as well. I'm gonna keep on moving. Oh, this is hard work, I'm building up a sweat. I think I'm pretty much done. Last bit of the gear, recovery kit, probably one of the most important. I think I'll probably end up back up here again. I know I'll get home tonight and I'll get things running, running through my head. Forgot this or I need to get that. Um, this has been a pretty cool day up here at TJF. Alright, so like usual, the build's taken a little bit of a turn. We're waiting on some suspension components to turn up from ARB. Perfect opportunity to get the car down here to you design, and we're going to get this thing wrapped. We're going to go with a full matte black wrap on this. Probably not the most practical, but this is going to be a really badass looking truck. Good thing about the wrap is, protects the paint. You know the type of four-wheel driving that I do. This thing is going to get a bit of a hiding. When I'm done with it, pull the wrap off, give it a buff, it's brand new. You can see the boys have done a lot of work over the weekend. We've stripped this car back to bare nothing. We've taken all the moulds out, grills out, headlights out, all the door handles. Give these guys the opportunity to do what they do really well. The reason why we've chosen to wrap it instead of paint it, look, to do a full black paint job on this thing, to get it done properly, you'd be looking upwards of 10 grand. This is about a $4,000 job and you know what? Six months time, if you don't like the colour, I want to change the look of the truck. We bring it back in here and let the boys do it all over again. Okay, so the boys have got the truck inside, on the hoist, and fitting what I consider to be probably the most important aspect of the build of this truck, the suspension. Now we've chosen for this one the Old Man Engu BP51s. These things are an internal bypass and remote reservoir shock. Now, what does that mean? I suppose the simplest way with the internal bypass is when the piston is in the middle of the stroke there, it allows it to travel like a normal shock. Let's the oil, there's, there's little valves inside, little holes inside that let the oil bypass the piston so it's not working so hard and, it's, and it operates quite smoothly. When it gets to the top of the stroke or the bottom of the stroke, that oil compresses a lot harder and it acts like an internal bump stop. Now the remote reservoir gives you a lot more oil capacity, gives you a lot more capacity in there for the nitrogen, the gas as well. And what that does is stop the cavitation of the oil. So you won't get any shock fade with these things. 
when you're sitting on those those big long stretches of corrugations, you can give the car a hiding and you're not going these things aren't going to heat up, they're not going to get hot and start to fail. So the same treatment's been done to the back. We've put in rear springs, greasable shackles, we've added in the sway bar and of course the BP51s. Now I forgot to mention before the BP51s are fully adjustable as well on the compression and the rebound. This truck is just going to ride insane, I can't wait to get it on those dirt roads. The last part of build video one of our 79 Super Tourer is fitting the wheels and tyres. Gone with a 17 by 8 inch ROH Octagon and a 35 inch BF Goodrich KM2 Mud Terrain. I've had a lot of really good experiences with the KM2 so I'm going to stick to what I know. Now when it comes to the wheels you hear a lot of people that will tell you that alloys are no good in the bush, you've got to go with a steel wheel. Well to me that's not really true. There's a lot of Chinese wheels, a lot of really cheap rims available. ROH are one of the very few companies that still manufacture in Australia. They're die cast and machined in Adelaide, they obviously meet Australian standards and with that sort of quality rim, not going to have a problem. 